video tutorial on drum miking techniques. I'm Andrea Nemeth, and today we'll be trying out different drum miking techniques with our guest, Brian Roberts. We are here in Cleveland, Ohio, home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Tri-C's Tommy LaPuma Center for Creative Arts, where I'm a part of the Recording Arts and Technology program. I'll show you that you can achieve a great drum sound whether you only have a few mics or a microphone arsenal at your disposal. Today we'll be going over the following techniques. The Glenn Johns Method, George Massenberg Method, Recorder Man, Kick Drum Miking Alternatives, multiple microphones, and room microphones. Let's go ahead and get started. The first method we'll talk about today is the Glenn Johns Method. Glenn Johns is a British engineer and producer who has most notably worked with Led Zeppelin, The Who, The Rolling Stones, The Eagles, and even The Beatles, among many others. Famous for the Led Zeppelin drum sound, Glenn Johns is well respected in his field, and many engineers exclusively use his technique for recording drums. The Glenn Johns technique is comprised of two to four microphones. Most importantly, the use of two specifically placed overheads with optional close mics on the kick drum and the snare drum. First, I'll focus on the kick drum close mic. For this example, I'm using an Audix D6 microphone placed inside the kick drum pointed at the beater. Next, I place the Shure SM57 microphone on the snare drum, pointed at the center of the snare. With the Glenn Johns method, the close mics are optional, but do allow for more overall control of volume and frequency balance, as well as the clarity and attack of the drum kit as a whole, adding dimension. Finally, we have our two overhead microphones. The first overhead microphone is placed three to four feet directly above the snare drum, pointing down at the kit. In this case, I used a Neumann U87 large diaphragm condenser microphone set in cardioid polar pattern. This mic should hear a clear balance of the whole kit. If one element of the kit is lacking and another is too abrasive, point the mic accordingly to create the balance you are looking for. The second overhead mic is also a Neumann U87, positioned to the right of the floor tom. Six inches from the rim is a good place to start. Point the mic across the tom towards the snare drum and the hi-hat. The key is to make sure both overhead mics are exactly the same distance from the snare drum. This helps to eliminate phase cancellation and keeps the snare in the center of the stereo field. Because of the positioning of this mic, it acts more as a side fill mic than an overhead complementing the balanced first overhead mic by capturing the kit at a different vantage point. Pan these mics hard left and right for a well-balanced stereo image. Now we will have Brian take over and demonstrate a drum pattern we can record using the Glenn Johns method. The audio you are about to hear is the audio recorded from this microphone setup. The next technique I'll demonstrate is the George Massenberg method. George Massenberg is an American recording engineer who is known for working with Earth, Wind & Fire, Billy Joel, Journey, James Taylor, the Dixie Chicks, and Toto, among others. This minimalist miking technique comprises of two overhead microphones and optional close mics on the kick drum, snare drum, and toms. The key to this method is the placement of the overhead microphones. Instead of the traditional horizontal placement of the overheads across the kit, George Massenberg suggests a diagonal placement in order for the kick drum and the snare drum to both remain in the center of the stereo field. 
The overheads are placed equidistant from the kick and the snare to ensure their center image and the kit's left-right balance. Imagine that the center of the kit is on a diagonal axis where the middle of the kick drum meets the center of the snare. Move the overheads in for a narrower stereo image and out or farther away from the center for a wider stereo image. Close mics are added for transient attack. Massenberg states that the close mics hear the attack while the overheads hear the size. George Massenberg believes in the use of minimal microphones stating, the fewer microphones, the fewer opportunities for phase cancellation. Now we will have Brian demonstrate the same drum pattern used previously. This time, the audio you are about to hear was recorded using the George Massenberg method. Another technique Massenberg suggests is using a ribbon microphone to capture the snare drum and the hi-hat. Instead of using a traditional dynamic mic on the snare, Massenberg suggests placing a ribbon mic on a horizontal axis in the space between the snare and the hi-hat and level with the rim of the snare. Due to the bi-directionality of the ribbon mic, in this case a Royer R121, Massenberg suggests that the resonance of the snare is cancelled, while the transient's top and bottom waves sum into the ribbon element. Now we will have Brian demonstrate the same drum pattern, substituting the Shure SM57 on the snare for the Royer R121 ribbon mic. The last minimalist drum miking technique I will demonstrate is Recorder Man. Like the others, this method has a unique placement for the two overhead mics with optional close mics on the kick, snare, and toms. The overheads comprise of two large diaphragm condenser microphones. The first overhead is placed directly above the snare, approximately two drumsticks high, pointing directly at the snare drum. The second overhead is placed over the drummer's right shoulder, pointing down at the snare, the kick drum's beater, or somewhere in between. It is essential for the overhead mics to be the exact same distance from the center of the snare and the beater of the kick drum. This can be measured using a mic cable. Have the drummer pin a mic cable with the kick drum beater and hold the mic cable taut at the center of the snare. Next, raise the mic cable towards the first overhead and pinch the cable. Then move the cable over to the second overhead to verify that the distances are equal. Now we'll have Brian demonstrate the same drum pattern. This time, the audio you're about to hear was recorded using the Recorder Man method.
Now let's demonstrate some kick drum miking alternatives. I will be demonstrating the tunnel method. This time, I will be using a Cascade Fathead ribbon microphone outside of the kick drum and a Heil PR40 dynamic microphone inside of the kick drum. Place a heavy blanket over the front of the kick drum and secure it with gaff tape. Prop it up a few feet away with a guitar stand so that the blanket surrounds the kick drum and the mics in a tunnel-like shape. Brian will now demonstrate the drum pattern. This time, the audio has been recorded with the tunnel method. Now let's compare the tunnel method with the standard kick drum close mic method using the Audix D6. Now I will demonstrate drum recording using multiple microphones. In this instance, I will use two overheads, close mics on the kick drum, sub kick, snare drum, both on the top and the bottom, and the toms. The room mics I'll bring in later. For the kick drum, I'll bring back the Audix D6 inside the drum. This time, I'll add a sub kick outside of the kick drum. This one is custom made from a 12 inch Fender speaker driver. Next, I'll use a Shure SM57 on both the top and the bottom of the snare. And two Neumann U87 microphones for the overheads. For the rack and floor tom, I'm using a Sennheiser MD-421. As an alternative to making a custom sub kick, you can use a sub kick like this one made by Yamaha. As previously mentioned, the sub kick we are using is made from a 12 inch Fender speaker driver with its cable soldered to an XLR connection to be used with a standard mic cable. We have it propped up on a short mic stand a few inches from the kick drum. As always, when you record using multiple microphones, it is important to check for phase in order to avoid cancellation. To do so, start out by soloing the overhead mics. the drummer hit the snare drum for loud, clean transients and listen back in mono. Press the phase button on one channel of the overheads to reverse the polarity. Continue pressing and depressing the button, listening for any changes. If the snare has a fatter, lower tone in one setting than the other, leave the setting there. Often when phase cancellation occurs, it most obviously affects low frequencies. Once the overheads are in phase, unmute the other mics one at a time. In order to make it easier to hear any changes, the drummer should play the drum that corresponds to each mic being checked. Flip and unflip the phase on each channel until everything is in phase with the overheads and each other. Now I will have Brian demonstrate the same drum pattern as we use the multiple mics technique.
Finally, we will add some room mics to the mix. Room mics can be used to add space to drum recordings, oftentimes making drums sound bigger. First up, we have our room near mics. We will be using two Royer R121 ribbon microphones placed in Bloomline. A gobo will be used to block the direct drum sound so that the bi-directional microphones will only pick up the sound reflecting off the walls in the room. Next, we have our room far mics. These mics are placed in a space pair. Gobos are also placed in front of these mics to block the drum's direct sound. In this case, we are using Audio-Technica AT4050s, which are large diaphragm condenser microphones set in a cardioid polar pattern pointed away from the drums. These mics will pick up the reflected sounds in the back of the room. Now let's add the room mics to our recording. Now let's do a comparison with room mics versus without room mics. This concludes my video tutorial on drum miking techniques. I hope you took away that a great drum recording can be achieved no matter how few or how many mics you have using these great techniques. Until next time, I'm Andrea Nemeth.